Let's go ahead and send it. I'm back today with kind of a new player in the fiber laser scene. This is the Hans Maker. So this is a 20 watt fiber laser. It's their F1 Pro. It has 110 millimeter uh, field lens. So this one's right in there at 110. And it does have an optional 175 by 175. I, I was really surprised by this one. It's pretty light. It's only about 16 and a half pounds. The base and stuff is pretty light. And obviously you're gonna have some heft in the laser, but it's super stable for its weight. Everything's, you know, fine on it. It does have a motorized up and down. It does have the safety cone, if you want to use that. I just, you know, wear the safety glasses and stuff. It does come with the safety glasses. It came super well packaged. It was just, it was beautiful in the box. I will say on mine, at least, it was inserted into the box upside down from the printing. So when I opened it, you know, I just had to flip the box over and dump the whole styrofoam container thing out. So I got a bit ahead of myself. I'm trying to adjust the focus and it wasn't doing anything. It's because I forgot to plug it in, which I would stress like read your manual because I saw that cable in there and I was like, oh, they got it so you can hook it up to the network. No, that's, <laughs> that's for this. Uh, maybe Ryan should read manuals. Uh, let me, we're gonna start with the business card and then we'll go from there. So you can see here, I did have to uh, kind of mess around with the uh, settings a little to get the image going the way I wanted pick this up for you. But I finally figured it out. So I would use something cheap to test on real fast. Um, I'm, I'm never really good in the software about understanding what it's asking when it's talking about reverse and X, Y and stuff. So I always just do this with a business card and then I've got it dialed in. So yeah, this is an optimal setting for these cards. I was just using whatever Lightburn opened at, but they actually came out really nice. These are the thicker cards. Um, I prefer these. What I do with these is I put my passwords on them, like uh, my master password and some one-time passwords for Gmail. And then I have them in an order that I know. And then uh, for the different accounts. Now, let me do something on the back of this now that I've got it kind of figured out. Let's go ahead and send it. And I will say I'm just doing this in real time. This isn't sped up at all. So this will give you a good idea. Notice all the smoke coming off. You do want to do this in a well-ventilated area. I'm in the garage, the garage door open. Uh, you could build an enclosure for this, and I think they plan to offer one in the future. They don't right now, but you might watch for that. An enclosure on these things is nice because you can suck all those fumes away and exhaust them somewhere. You can also make one pretty easy. Just get some plywood and some Lexan and some silicone caulk and won't take you long at all. That actually came out really nice. Let me just wipe it off here. Oh, that came out beautiful. That might be the best one of these I've done yet. Uh, some of it's just these thick cards. They're really nice. And again, you know, there's all those ones I did on the first try, but I'm definitely uh, very happy with that setting. You could also use this on like the aluminum water bottles, uh, you know, like a Yeti or something. This setting would probably work good. Again, that's 666 speed and 100% power. What else? You know, just one pass. And then the interval is point. 0.0250 and 25 kilohertz. Now that we've done that, let's try doing the same thing on one of these uh, stainless steel dog tags. Um, that actually might, nope, so we're gonna have to shrink it just a little. Oh, I've actually tested something on this before, so I'm gonna shrink it a little more. So here's something I had tested previously. Uh, you can kind of see that, that was a different laser. So I know the lighting on this isn't the greatest because I've got the, like a diffused sun behind me. We've got those Canadian wildfires going and we've had haze for days down here in Indiana. But um, in future videos, I'm gonna have a much better setup for this, hopefully. And yeah, but for now, this will work. So I'm trying this at 750 speed, 37% power, 45 kilohertz, uh, the power max, again, 37, and then 0 0.0250. So 45 kilohertz, 750 speed, 37% power, 0.025. Oh, interval. Don't know how well this is going to work. And there she goes. Oh, it seems to be coming out all right. Oh yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with that. So there's another successful, dude, this laser is just great. Like that's just this anodized, uh, you know, steel. I think it's steel. It might be aluminum. Um, I think they're steel. They're really heavy, but that came out beautiful. Well, we're still here at steel. Let's try this again. And I want to use as much of this as I can. I apologize. I thought I was in focus that whole time. My bad. Um, that actually came out really nice. That's not really a deep engrave. 
So there you go. Uh, you can kind of see it there. And we're just gonna go right next to it. And this time we're gonna do a lot more passes. So for you, it looks like we're in focus. Ryan's an idiot. I forgot to focus when I changed the material. This is an experiment I'm gonna try here. I've taken that initial deep engrave and I've slowed it way down. We're at 200 now. You know, I didn't focus for that dog tag either and it came out pretty great. Ugh, sorry, a bee keeps flying by my head and it's wigging me out. So I definitely got some deep engrave there, but I also got a lot of overburn. Yeah, so there's that pass with the deep engrave. Obviously this one's the deepest because I did it much slower, but now that it's in focus, it's a little bit deeper than that. And then I would come back in with like a coloring pass, but you kind of get the idea. Um, I'm gonna give it a pretty simple shape here and we're just gonna go crazy for a little bit and just see how deep we can go. So this is just a white finish setting that I have. I'm gonna do a few settings with the same square and we'll just take a look at them. And I'll be back when all of those are done. Just dang it guys, I forgot to focus it again. So that was the white frame. Now I'm gonna move over just a little and we're gonna do um, engrave. We're just doing fills on these squares. So let me do the engrave now. And I've found with aluminum, everything's pretty much the same. I'm never too happy with aluminum in general. Uh, I just think it doesn't get great finishes, but you can see the three different settings. So you can get a kind of an idea what you're in for, for aluminum. What I really like is when you have the anodized aluminum and then you're removing the anodized layer and then you get just the bare aluminum, uh, you'd get something more like that. But yeah, there's that. We'll take a look at these in the shade a little bit better at the end of the video. <laughs> And last but not least, we're going to go ahead and do a stone coaster. Uh, make sure I'm getting it focused this time. Good enough. So let me get a design on here and we'll let it rip. So, you know, this is taking several minutes. These always do. We're at about seven minutes, 40 seconds right now. Uh, one pro tip when you're doing these, if you're doing the slate, hit it with a clear matte acrylic uh, spray, let it dry. The lines look so much better. Something I picked up off a of Facebook group. I didn't do that here, but every time I have done it, it looks so much better. So yeah, little pro tip for you. All right, again, I apologize for the lighting in here because we have can lights, but we'll try to do our best. So there's that dog tag, came out really good. Here's the coaster we just did. This down here is just natural imperfections in the slate. There was something metallic there that it was hitting. You'll, if you've done a bunch of these, you'll, you're pretty used to that, I'm sure. But got a nice depth there. This took about 17 minutes. This was that steel that we did. You can see the different uh, layers there. And mind you, some of those weren't even in focus, so. <laughs> They still came out pretty good. These three on the right were not in focus and they came out brilliantly. They were um, a little off. We had been doing the business card and we were doing this and that's, you know, quite a, quite a difference in thickness. So always make sure you're in focus, you'll get the best results, but still pretty good. And there's that aluminum. You can see the three different uh, settings there. Kind of hard to show on camera. Kind of hard to see in person actually. Again, when I do the aluminum, I prefer to do stuff that's been anodized because then you get the nice, like look how great that looks. And even here where I was just trying to figure out the orientation of the laser so I could get everything right to my final one here, like all those, you know, that, was, that wasn't even me so setting, selecting my aluminum setting. That was just whatever light burnt opened at. But then when I actually gave it my anodized aluminum setting, really stinking good. Also, I, I would just stress, never buy those thin ones, get these ones that don't really flex. They just, they do so much better. Those thin ones, you put them in your wallet and instantly they're bent, they're 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 just ruined. Uh, these hold up really good. Also those thin ones, just they get scratched so easy because the anodizing is so thin. But on this, like you can, you know, sometimes just taking it off the metal plate, I'll scratch the back on those thin ones. So yeah, I always go with something like that. But that's been it. That's the Hans Maker. Uh, so far, I really like it. I would like to play with it more, but I just don't have the time. We're moving in a couple of weeks and I need to get everything packed up and ready. Uh, the buyer finally accepted all of the responses to their inspection yesterday. So we're full steam ahead to closing and I just don't have the time to play with this laser as much as I would like. But I wanted to get something up and yeah, I'm gonna repack it in the box. And once I get to my destination, it'll probably be like August or September until I have a chance to play with this because I have a bunch of other stuff I gotta do when we get there. We have family reunions and stuff and 
you know, July is just going to be so busy and it's already, uh, I don't know, like the 5th of June or something. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video and watch out for this in the future.